We begin tonight with breaking news. To serve and protect, and y'all just standing there. Let's go. How can Let's we go. hear somebody screaming from Harrison Street? We are A big crowd gathering at the site of the collapsed building in downtown Davenport. Police are moving people away from the scene on Main Street, and they're urging people to stay away from the site with the structural integrity of that building totally compromised. Police are moving the crowd back to Harrison Street. No one is allowed up to the fencing for safety reasons. Good evening and thank you for joining us. I'm John Diaz. We have live team coverage tonight from Davenport. News H Joe McCoy is in downtown where firefighters within the past few hours rescued a woman from that partially collapsed building that the city claimed had, quote, no confirmed viable signs of life. As of tonight, that building is supposed to be torn down in a matter of hours. Good evening, Joe. Good evening, John. As you just said, an unbelievable story. They still found a living human being in the building tonight, but you can see there's around 100 people still gathered here. Now at about a 7.30 a.m. is when they found this woman that News 8 had confirmed by the family was Lisa Ann. Now the story that they told News 8 was that Lisa Ann was knocked out. We don't know if she was asleep or she was knocked out by potential gas for whatever reason, but she was not awake. She got up. She was able to charge her phone and then she called her daughter. She called her daughter to tell her that she was still alive. At that point, they were able to get firefighters and paramedics to come to the scene and take her out of her apartment. But these protests. Grieved by the firefighters. They have the basket up to her window. What she did was she kicked out her screen and she was started to scream out uh, into the crowd to let them know that she was still alive. And now people are still here tonight. I don't believe they're going to go anywhere anytime soon. You saw in the uh, in the sound right off the top, people are extremely angry and it's pretty ominous how close this building is to City Hall. They are across the street from each other and these people are calling for the city officials to do something about this building. They are pleading with them to not demolish the building tomorrow morning because they still believe there are people in that building and we want to get you two names that we have seen online and that people here at the protest still believe could be in those buildings. Those two names are Ryan Hitchcock and Brandon Colvin. Those are two people that we believe are unaccounted for and that people are still pleading for the fire rescue and paramedic crews to go back into that building, back into the rubble and hopefully look for. But I want to bring in News H Jonathan Fong, who is here with us as well. Jonathan, you are covering this story and it's been a pretty crazy couple of hours for the people who are now displaced out of this building. Yeah, certainly. I mean, the energy here is certainly shocking. It's something to see. It just hours ago was a little bit more subdued, but there were still dozens of people kind of looking on, curious, and there was a variety of reactions. I mean, there were some people that were shocked, some people that were upset, frustrated, some people that are worried about the residents and the future for them. Now, it's worth mentioning that, as we know, um, the city has said that the building is not safe to go back into. That's why they're keen to demolish it quickly. But as you and I both know, that means that residents cannot go back into the building and retrieve their stuff. So they're going to lose all of that. And for one mother that's a resident of that building, this is going to be the second time she's reliving something like this. A friend called me and told me it was going to get uh, tore down. And I'm like, I don't think so. I didn't hear anything about it. A tough reality for Toriana. Not even an hour later, I received a call from the sheriff and I asked him and he was like, yes, they demolishing it tomorrow. A single mother and postal worker. And nobody could get that stuff. So everything I worked for is gone. The building she lived in since last October partially collapsed on Sunday. I just beat homelessness last year and now I'm right back where I started. Yeah, yeah, pretty, pretty frustrated. Upset the owners didn't let her know about the demolition. It's crazy. It's crazy that y'all keep taking people money and then now we have no place to go. Dozens of bystanders. You see it on TV, it's one thing. Staring in awe at the destruction. But when you come down here and you see it in person, it just, it's devastating. Cindy, a photographer. It just brought tears to my eyes, just even seeing it and thinking that there could be somebody under that rubble. Visiting her daughter who lives nearby. It's horrible. I mean, all those people with nowhere to go. I mean, what are they gonna do? Nobody expected anything like this to happen, I'm sure. Just devastating. 
other bystanders. In awe over it, just wonder how long it's been this bad, like what happened and what the response and how people are getting help. Now there are still several questions that are left unanswered despite several press conferences from city officials. Things that we're still uncertain about, the amount of injuries or deaths, if any, and if there are any main reasons or causes behind the building's partial collapse. What we do know is that residents have complained about the building's condition in the interior several times and that city permits have been issued for preparing the wall that had come down on that side and then the building owners have been working with engineers to get that side repaired. Back to you, John. All right, Jonathan, Joe, excellent coverage tonight. Thank you. Iowa Governor Kim Reynolds has declared the building collapse in downtown Davenport a disaster. This opens up assistance for those residents impacted by the collapse. The Iowa Individual Assistance Grant Program provides grants up to $5,000 for replacement of clothing, food, and temporary housing expenses. All right, residents are speaking out about the building's condition before it collapsed. They say the building built in 1911 had endless issues from water leaks to cracks in the walls. The city of Davenport says the building owner had permits to make wall repairs under the direction of an engineer. Tenants saying they aren't surprised something went wrong, but that they could have never imagined an issue of this magnitude. When you first come into my apartment on the right hand side before you go into the kitchen, there was a, a, a crack like this long. We shouldn't have been there and how dare them. Shame on them. Davenport officials tell us right now they don't believe anyone died in the collapse. They also say demolition of the building, as we mentioned earlier, will begin tomorrow.